The global headquarters of Tesla is officially open and making deliveries after Cyber Rodeo on April 7th. I feel like you just stepped into the future. The grand opening of Tesla's massive Giga Texas called for a massive celebration. And of course, I didn't want to miss it. This is going to be the benchmark for factories of the future everywhere in the world. Yo, we made it in. Oh my God. Austin. This is the most exciting parking experience I've had in my life. Hey, what are these? Oh, cool. Got our wristbands. Proceed straight ahead. Hey guys, I am here at Cyber Rodeo at Giga Texas. Check this out. I'm gonna do my best to show you as much as I can. It's a pretty big building. What is this main area? So you're in the casting shop right now. Okay. And those things that say DCM 6100, those are the die casting machines. So you've seen the big giga castings for the front and rear of the model on the line. Um, those are the machines that actually make those. Wow. So I'm trying to see like the hydraulic rams there that actually uh, close the die casting machine up then you would shoot a molten slug of aluminum in there and cool that down to create the casting okay and you've got the robots on top that would actually come in and pluck the casting out as it's cooling eventually it's going to be single piece for the whole thing right that would be desirable i don't know if that's in the plan that, that's a really big casting to try yeah, yeah. To, to try to do one shot of molten aluminum yeah um there's already challenges doing as big of a piece as we currently do so um, doing bigger is uh, it's a it's a cooling rate issue and getting everything to not because you can have hot cracking and all kinds of stuff going on with the molten aluminum as it cools yeah, so sure. it's already fairly complex geometry right. and we don't do serial number five of anything everything's yeah. constantly evolving right it's a right. whole uh, uh, the Elon way yeah exactly. yeah exactly this display is just kind of showing like how many parts you would normally need and then how they've right. condensed it into one. Right, and so that eliminates not only time, it eliminates materials, and it eliminates floor space in your factory that has to not only make all those parts, right. but to process all that into right. a, a no. rear section of a car. That's so, so cool. It, it, the equivalent at another OEM might take up this whole shop floor space where we've got just the, the gas. Yeah. trying to do as much of the processing as we can here. The batteries, you know, the cathode materials. roughly in like the 12 hours to make an individual car from start to finish through the system. Um, other OEMs are probably in the 30 to 40 something hour range, wow. so we can create a car much faster. Some of that is the, the simplified processes, things like the giga castings and stuff like right. that. Advanced automation, you know, Tesla's real big on deleting parts and processes that aren't necessary. Hell yeah. So we're going to get to the point where it is safer than the regular human driving because it's not distracted by a text message. It's not trying to change the radio station or anything like yeah. that. It's not not to say it's perfect, but you know, it's ever vigilant, I guess you could say. It wasn't my first rodeo, but it was my first time seeing Elon Musk in person. How's that banana, Ellie? What does Bebo think of Cyber Rodeo? He loves it. He's yeah. glad to be here. <laughs>
No, I didn't get personally invited. I actually had my Willy Wonka golden ticket moment when I got a message request on Twitter. And thank goodness I checked it, um, but this is really cool. Touring the inside was even more magical than I expected. We're basically um, make, bringing to fruition the things that we said we would do. Uh, we said we'd uh, basically make the car out of three major pieces, a rear body casting, a structural pack where the cells themselves carry load, um, just like minor airplanes where the, the, the wing is a, a fuel tank in wing, in wing shape. Now, uh, with the new Model Y uh, architecture, the cells themselves carry load. Um, and that it, uh, results in a car that is lighter, uh, a small number of parts, uh, uh, costs less, and improves the crash performance. Elon didn't share too much new information, but he made sure to throw a hell of a party. In rodeo fashion, there was a mechanical bull, lasso lessons, even free tattoos to commemorate the event. So they have a tattoo parlor, yes, actual tattoos here at Cyber Rodeo. They have a stick and poke version and a machine version. So people are waiting in line right now. They're only doing stencils and you can get them on your arms or your legs, but pan around and you can see that people are actually here and they're gonna get tattoos at Cyber Rodeo. We're not doing any questions today, only on our If I had to choose, I would have either gotten the Tesla logo or the Cybertruck sketch, but no, I didn't come home with a new tattoo. And something I'd never seen before, a drone show. The rodeo brought out a lot of familiar faces in the Tesla sphere. Everyone I talked to had their own unique takeaways from seeing the inside of this Giga factory. You saw downstairs, what do you think? Uh, this place is like a, I feel like you just stepped into the future. Like, it, don't you think? Doesn't it feel yeah. like you literally just walk through the door and it's the future. This big clean slate, you know, all the robotics, it's insane. It's funny because I think Elon tried to do, you know, he wanted to do a lot of automation in, in Fremont. And then to see it like, you know, get the kinks worked out and all of a sudden you have this sprawling factory of like futuristic robotic stuff. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Now I know you're friends with Elon. Is this your first time in here? Yeah, first time in here for sure. Yep. Um, that's awesome. What, so, and are, are you planning another tour of Starbase? Yes, yes. Uh, we had one planned and then stuff happened sure. uh, and uh, I had to leave. So we're working on it. I, I hope that I hope that by the time we, we do the next one, there's some Raptor 2s there. That's, that's what I'm hoping, so. Heck yeah. And yeah. we know that, you know, you're everyday astronaut, but you know, are you really into Tesla? Oh yeah, Tesla. yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've had a Tesla since 2018. I've put 65,000 miles on that thing. I drive that thing back and forth to Iowa and Texas. I love it. I mean, it's it's Tesla and SpaceX are both kind of leading the way in, in their industry. So right. how can you not be excited about it? Tell me what you think, Sandy Monroe. Okay, so this building is huge. By all automotive standards, it's huge. Right. The, uh, the impact that this is gonna have on the entire industry, regardless of whether it's here in North America or Europe or even in China, is going to be abs absolutely out of this world. The battery pack manufacturing is uh, the best I've ever seen. And I've seen dozens of battery manufacturing systems. Right. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the new uh, new upgrades that they've got on the castings. Downstairs looks kind of like a normal, um, a normal body assembly operation, but having half the number of parts disappear in a car makes the footprint a lot smaller. I believe that I believe that this is a four floor operation, which is not you can't see that right away. But after checking things out, I'm good at that sort of stuff. It's a four floor operation, and I'm not sure what's on the fourth floor. They won't let us up there. But my guess is that that there's got magic going on in there. Somehow they've got magic. This place, this is going to be the benchmark for factories of the future everywhere in the world. Wow. Yes. Did, it, is it, did it exceed your expectations yes. now that you're inside of here? Yeah. Yes, Around. it did. Yeah. It, it, it exceeded my expectations. What are you most excited about with Tesla? Uh, first off, their scalability. This, this building here, uh, this building could probably produce at least a million vehicles a year, at least, uh, maybe more. I don't know whether they're uh, saying that sort of stuff, but I know facilities, and I can tell you for sure, this is more than a, this is more than a million a year. So I, I'm telling you flat, like I said, people are going to be coming around here paying tickets 
buying tickets to get a tour in the future. Right. Other automotive companies. Right. At least they should have. You went to Cyber Rodeo. What did you think? Um, it was amazing. I got to do a self tour of the entire factory um, along with other people. Got to see all the machine robots in action. I think it's a huge step change from Fremont factory. I think they're really doing kind of a next generation manufacturing. So super excited. I think we're going to see a lot of great uh, vehicles out of Austin. Right, and you're local. I mean, what does it mean to have this in your backyard? I know, it was like, yeah, I just hopped in my car 20, 25 minutes later I'm in, at the factory. Um, it's great. I mean, I've been passing by the factory a lot uh, in recent weeks, so it's been a blast to be in the factory, um, see the cars. There must have been like over 100 or 200 bodies, like in the right. like car bodies, right, right. that they were making. Um, so yeah, to see this pumping pumping out thousands, you know, per week is going to be great. Seeing it inside, what surprised you the most? Um, probably the single piece uh, rear and front castings. Um, seeing the press, and then also. Um, the 4680 cells, they had some displays. And also learning that every single pretty much Model Y is going to have 4680 cells out of Austin. You know, having worked at Tesla, the, the scale of the factory was, was pretty incredible. Having seen Fremont in person was really, um, it was very different because Giga Texas is one structure versus Fremont being many structures. And so the scale of the factory was overwhelming, honestly. So that was incredible. There's a lot of people that will talk about the technology and you know the different, the battery tech, the single, you know the, the front casting, the rear casting, and all that stuff, which is also incredibly advanced. But really, the big takeaway for me, and we talked about this a little bit before, is the the fact that it's the true American story under one roof. You you know you walk into the factory, you're in the parking lot, and there's gigantic pickup trucks, sedans and Model Ys all next to each other. And then the pickup truck owners will step out and talk with the Model Y owners. And these are people from all kinds of different walks of life. You walk in, everybody's holding a drink, and they're looking at a bunch of different, you know, machinery and technology. And then they go talk, you know, they go see this uh, immigrant from South Africa, Elon Musk, speak, you know? And we're all celebrating this incredible achievement together as a community. And that was very overwhelming. It oh almost gosh. made me very emotional, you yeah. know? Because I'm like, man, like, we have this, vision of what America is and I feel like Tesla is like the poster child of what great American stories are. Real quick reaction yes. to Cyber Rodeo and, and Giga Texas. Oh, super motivating. Uh, the biggest takeaway was actually, in my opinion, a brilliant announcement that I think kind of, you know, it's not like a new product. It wasn't really exciting for everybody. But when Elon says the factory is the product and the next phase is scale, I, I take this as a hint that Building two factories at a time is easy now. Berlin, Texas, we've done that. Next step is announcing five to ten new locations and actually breaking ground on them. And now we really print cars, so I'm very excited. Heck yeah. What was your favorite thing you did at Cyber Rodeo? Getting my mic signed by May Musk. Nice! <laughs> yeah. Warren, what did you think of the inside of Giga Texas and Cyber Rodeo? So, there was a lot. It was really cool to see a lot of the manufacturing. I wasn't as into that. I mean, I, I enjoyed myself. I had a lot of fun, saw a lot of people, but the manufacturing process, and there was one particular detail that stood out to me, is if there was this one spot where you could see the structural battery pack for the 4680 cells for the Model Y, and it was different than the previous version of the structural pack. The previous version of the structural pack was one big rectangle with a whole bunch of cells in it and the cell cooling was going laterally, side to side. And in the, the one that we just saw, it wasn't a solid rectangle. There were these longitudinal gaps front to back. There were these gaps between, the, between groups of batteries and the cooling went front to back, back to front rather than side to side. And it just shows they're continuing to innovate on their engineering. And I don't know what the specific purpose is of changing it this way or changing it that way. But it's really fascinating to see that they're constantly iterating. They're constantly coming up with different designs. They're constantly challenging their engineering to figure out how can we do this better? How can we do this better? I talked to some Tesla engineers who were out there showing things off and right. Right, you know, not showing things off, but there to answer questions. <laughs> they, they, could, they, wouldn't, they couldn't or wouldn't answer a lot of my questions, but you can <laughs> see that's and this is the other thing, actually taking a step aside from that one physical thing. It's striking when you talk to Tesla employees. Because everybody thinks it's all about Elon, and of course Elon is really, really important, and we're all big fans. But he often talks about the Tesla team, and I think people don't really take it to heart, that this is a company that has 100,000 plus employees, and a lot of them are smart, motivated, hardworking, passionate, 
and they get the culture of innovation. Right. And so this is a company that is way different. And, and Ellie and I saw this at Starbase as well. We talked to SpaceX employees and even a contractor. Uh, you know, the commitment that they have to the mission is compelling. So there's, there's, that's, I think there's a physical side of it and there's the human side of it. And I, I came to the, I actually tweeted this, that people don't realize that one of Elon's greatest strengths is building a team and managing a team and leading a team and inspiring a team, that that is one of the, one of the essential things about Elon's companies. Like Warren pointed out with this battery, we also saw iterations during the tour with Jonathan. So you're saying that those three cylinders are replacing well, those 40 some? Those three cylinders and some pumps and some heat exchangers underneath it in the second level uh -huh. um, are basically replacing all those individual TCUs. Wow. Cool. It's really cool to watch the design teams, yeah. the engineers and the designers go in and just try to reiterate and, right. and improve things. Perfect example. Yeah. We also saw a Tesla Semi and Tesla Bot. The new global headquarters covers 2,500 acres along the Colorado River with over 10 million square feet of factory floor. Gigafactory Texas is a U.S. manufacturing hub for the Model Y and the future home of Cybertruck. And Elon says they're aiming to produce half a million Model Ys a year and they plan to start manufacturing Cybertruck next year. So we are currently walking the length, just to, yeah, the length, just about, of uh, Giga Texas because our bus driver, our shuttle driver, took us to the end and then told us to get off. So it's almost midnight and we get to have a jolly walk to where we parked. I'm hungry, I'm tired, and I get more steps in. <laughs>